Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart. I'm here today with Victor Torres. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, my pleasure. And you Thanks were for in having me. the Microbiology Immunology Department. Microbiology were... Immunology Department for eight, eight years. Okay, so what did you do here at Vanderbilt? So I did my doctoral degree okay. uh, from 2000 to 2004, and then from 2004 to 2008, I did my postdoctoral studies. PhD was done with Tim Cover, and then postdoc, a building away from Eric Scar in Eric Scar's lab. Okay, yeah. and so what did you do after that? After that, I moved to New York City uh, to start my own lab, uh, an associate professor at uh, New York University School of Medicine, okay. and I have been there for eight years now. Okay, so what does your daily life look like? What do you do every day? I do science. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in, I work in a, in a major medical center at, at Vanderbilt. So okay. my job is to run a lab and teach very little and have fun running a lab. Okay, what are you working on? So I'm a microbiologist by training. Okay. Uh, PhD postdoc and I was in my lab. We, we study microbes, how microbes cause disease okay. and how can we target them by understanding the microbe or understanding the host and understanding drug development okay. and try to combine all that together and hopefully something will happen. Okay. <laughs> and so you just do science? All we day. just do science. Um, probably, well, not anymore. I'm an administrator now, right? Okay, I so run a lab. That? So pretty much I haven't touched a pipette in probably four years or five years. Does that make you sad? Yeah, very sad. I will give up my office for having a bench. <laughs> uh, so my day, uh, you know, I get to work. I'm sitting in front of a computer for eight, nine hours a day. And um, yeah, running the lab, taking okay. care of business. So my science now is done through grad students and postdocs and technicians. So that's where the fun part is. Okay, so how is this a good fit for you personally? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I didn't know when I came here, right? I came here to do my graduate studies and then things went well and then I stayed to do my postdocs and th things went well. And then I applied for jobs and I got good jobs and then I started a job and then I didn't know what the hell I was doing <laughs> because I was trying to be a scientist. And, and yes, while we do science, when you start your own lab, you do science for the first couple of years and you're probably the most expensive research tech that you will ever have. But after that, then things change and you become a mentor, you become a principal investigator, you become a psychologist, HR mm -hmm. administrator. So uh, that was a rough transition, right. <clears throat> but it was a transition that had to happen in order for me to have a successful lab. Right. And, and now uh, it's not that difficult anymore. It's, it's a job that I love. It's a job that I actually have fun doing. Now the, the parts that are more business-like uh, are not that strange anymore. Okay. And, and running a lab is not that complicated anymore. So now it's going back to the basic and, and, and just having fun doing what we do. Good, because I was going to ask you about those first couple of years and what they were like. What were some of the skills that you didn't have from your Vanderbilt training? Many, I think, and this is something that, you know, I'm glad that you guys, that you're asking and I'm glad that I know Vanderbilt is working hard on, on diversifying the portfolio that the students get and so do we at, at my school. You know, we, we, we train grad students as scientists and we do a good job. You guys do a good job here, we do a good job and, and many schools do a good job. But science is not what, it's not the only ingredient that we need to, to, to have a successful lab. Uh, in, in this case, that's the only thing that I can talk about. So skills I was missing, you know, we have, we have very little training on how to manage people. It's not the same as having a summer student or, or a young grad student in your lab where you can tell him or her what to do. And if things don't go well, then you just close your eyes and say, okay, see you, <laughs> next one come. <laughs> then when you have, you know, three, four, five, 15 people that depend on you. So I think managing people is a, is a skill set that uh, most graduate programs don't develop. The second is, you know, you have to become a human resource individual, not just by managing people, but also the finance of running a lab. You know, it doesn't matter how much administrative support you have, but at the end of the day, you have, at least the way I run my lab, I have a mini company. I, have, I run a company within a big school. 
but I'm responsible for everything. So the lack of uh, finance, basic knowledge on how to manage budgets, how to, you know, you could, you could envision, well, you're a scientist, you can figure out, yes, but it would be way more efficient if I would have had some sort of uh, basic training on, on, those, on those endeavors. I think managing people and, and the finance aspect of the business are things that are, uh, uh, that, that graduate programs are taken for granted. And then the PIs that somehow have a knack for that and, and come easy for them, then the transition is going to be way easier. The PIs that, are, are, that don't care or don't want to care or don't understand at all, they're going to have a harder time, I think. Okay. So if a current graduate student or postdoc wants to follow your path right now, mm -hmm. what would be the advice you would give them? I mean, these skills you talked about, but... They have to work hard. To know? You know, this Working job... Hard. This job is a job that I don't trade. I, I love it. I, I hope I could do it for the rest of my life. But it's a job that is very hard. It's harder than any job that I know. And, and the rewards might not be as glamorous or, or as nice as other jobs. <laughs> but to me, it's all about the freedom. I think with, with being a PI and running a lab, you get a freedom that there is no other job that I'm aware of that you get from. So that, that's, that's the, the motivation for, for doing this job. What did you need? You need to have tremendous work ethics. You need to have tremendous dedication. And you need to treat it as, as probably one of the most important things that you're doing because the competition is fearless. However, I still think it's worth it. And I still you know, try to advise my students and postdocs that there is no other job like this. Yeah, it's hard. Yes, there's a lot of hardships, but the freedom that comes with it, the ability of you coming to work in the morning and trying to think about a new problem, and in the afternoon, you're already addressing that problem because you can. That's awesome. Yeah. Priceless, people will say. So I think, you know, it's, uh, I think people, they, they have to keep working hard, and I know this is something that they hear in their labs, and some students and postdocs may think, oh, this is just self-serving for the PI. And it is to some extent, but it's also their careers. This is one job where if everything goes well, you're going to go as high as you work for. So if you work hard, if you work smart, if you surround yourself by good mentors, then, you know, I think then add these other skills that I mentioned. And, and you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be formal training. Just ask. You know, I did it when I was a postdoc. I was a postdoc in Eric Carr lab. I was his first postdoc. I joined his lab like six months after he opened his lab. So I was curious about every decision, most every decision <laughs> that he made. In, when he started his lab and he was, he was kind to share the rationale, to share the experience. So when I went up in my lab, yes, I was a new PI, but I was a new PI that saw how you assemble a lab and a productive lab. So I got a little bit of a head start. Good. So the academic job search, it's tough. Yeah. Tell me about maybe your experiences with the academic job search and what you would recommend to others. Yeah, I think it's not easy. Um, I just finished chairing a search myself, and I got 190 applicants Holy cow. for one position. But you know, when you're trying to find your dream job, it's not supposed to be easy. So I think what did you do? The first thing to do is to try to do a, a, a deep soul searching to try to match your expectations, your ability with the jobs that are out there. There are jobs that will require certain per, personality that you may or may not have. And if you don't have it, don't apply for it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste other people's time. We're all adults and professional. So that's the first thing to do is to, once you're ready to find a job, and how do you know you're ready? Well, you never know. You know, hopefully some colleagues, mentors will tell you, you know, maybe you want to start thinking about finding a job. That's what happened to me. I'm like, really? I could do this for another <laughs> five years. And, and hopefully you get surrounded by people like that. And then the next thing you do is you apply. Like, to me, there is no guarantee for anything, but if you don't try, you will not know. You apply, you sit tight, you cross your finger, you do whatever you do to hope for the best, 
and, and then wait for the emails or letters or, well, now it's emails or phone calls to come. But I think the key thing is to, it's, you know, it's okay to shoot higher than what you want, but you have to be realistic, at least in science. Because if you go to a teaching school, the requirement from you are going to be different than if you go to a you know, science place like Vanderbilt you know, University. Here, you, know, you do mostly research. There, you do research and teaching. Other schools, you might be able to do a lot of teaching and little research. So you have to find what you want and then apply. There are jobs. The idea that there are no jobs around is not true. There are jobs, and there are many jobs. The question is, are those jobs for you? Do they match what you want? And that you will not know until you apply. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your My time. My pleasure. Thanks for coming back. Sure. Glad to be here.